Dear students and working accountants, welcome to my Smart Tally Prime YouTube channel. My name is Babra from Hyderabad. Before entering into our topic today, I advise to you that is, if you want to learn Tally Prime, GST, TDS, TCS, everything perfectly and become and get expert knowledge and become expert accountant, please follow and practice all the videos in my channel in the same serial number order I uploaded and then you will get, you have to practice much. Then you will get a very good knowledge and you will become very good accountant or expert accountant. Okay. And then everyone, please subscribe to my channel without fail. If you have not already done, only once only you can subscribe. So everyone without fail, please subscribe to my channel and then click the bell icon on the right side and select all option. You will get notification for all the videos which I upload in my channel. And then share my channel, Smart Tally Prime, with all others, your friends or anybody you share to everyone who want to learn all these things. And then while watching the videos, Please watch every video till the end. Don't skip in the middle. If you skip in the middle, you will understand the theory part that is a discussion about the topic and the practical work done on the tally prime that is working on tally prime and the later part you will miss and you cannot understand. So watch till the end and after watching till the end, you please like my video if the video is good. And then in the bottom, in the comment section, you please, without fail, post your comment about the video. Okay, now we will enter out into our subject. I will uh, share the screen. See here, so far we have learned everything about all the things about the, uh, what you call, uh, the TDA, I mean, sorry, complete tally prime with GST, then in the Income Tax Act, TDS, TCS, all this we have completed. And uh, now we are going to the last end of the topics. That is last topic. That is returns under the GST Act. So after every person, every person registered under the Act, everyone that is called every taxpayer, given in the Act, the word taxpayer, we call them as dealers, dealer or taxpayer. Everyone has to submit some returns, some returns. That is the details regarding their business, they have to submit. The submitting the thing about their business is called a return. In the form of a statement, we submit them. That is called as returns. So GST returns. So in the GST Act, there are many returns sub to be submitted by different taxpayers, by different traders. And all the returns are not applicable to all, everyone. So these returns are applicable to some returns are applicable to some people and some other returns are to other people like that. Every return is not applicable to everyone and some returns will be applicable to each of the traders or taxpayers. Okay, now we'll come to now. Hey, actually, everyone crossing the limit, threshold limit that is in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, I mean, Telangana, it is 20 lakhs. In Andhra Pradesh, it is 40 lakhs only in the case of only goods. And goods and services are only services. To, to lag, the limit is 20 lakhs. That is the threshold limit. In different states, most of the states in India, it is 40 lakhs is the limit. In northeastern countries, not sorry, northeastern states like Meghalaya, Manipur, Mizoram, like that. In those cases, the limit is 20 lakhs. So, after if the trader or the taxpayer uh, businessman, if he crosses the threshold limit of the turnover, he has to get registered under the GST Act. It is mandatory registration. Okay. But even without crossing the limit also, even below the limit also, if you want, voluntarily, you can get registration. Okay. So, compulsory registration, if you cross the, if you cross the threshold limit, voluntary registration even below the threshold limit. So in this case, here 
the persons registering uh, the registered dealers, the dealers registering under the act, that is the registration, for the registration, purpose of registration, the there are two schemes in the act, two schemes in the act. One is regular scheme, another one is composition scheme. First, we'll tell about composition scheme, then you can easily understand the regular scheme. Composition scheme means it is meant for small business people without any hardship to them, without any I mean, uh, restrictions regarding the maintenance for maintenance of accounts and all these things. That is the scheme introduced for small business people. Who is small businessman means if the turnover is 1.5 crore or less, that is equal to or one, up to 1.5 crore, up to 1.5 crore, the composition scheme applicable. If you want, you can register under the composition scheme in the sense it is not a separate registration. The number, GH number, everything will be same. But in the registration form, there is option composition scheme. If you want that scheme, that composition scheme, if you select, you will become a composition dealer. Otherwise, you will be a, a regular dealer. If turnover is, if your turnover is up to 1.5 crore, you can get take this composition scheme option. So if you know, if you understand during the year, our turnover will not be more than, it will be less than 1.5 crore. In such case, you can take the composition scheme. But once you cross that 1.5 crore limit, then automatically you will be converted into a regular scheme. Okay. So this is about the composition scheme. And the other one is regular scheme. So if it is less than 1.5 crore also, it is not compulsory. It is optional. If you want you can take this composition scheme. Otherwise, you can take regular scheme also, even though your turnover is less than 1.5 crore. And 1.5 crore, less than 1.5 crore, voluntarily or above 1.4 crore compulsory is regular scheme. So composition scheme is up to 1.5 crore. If you want, you can take the scheme. Otherwise, you can go to, you can take as, you can take the regular scheme also. So in this other, thing is everyone falls under regular scheme unless you specifically take the composition scheme in the regular scheme itself in the regular scheme itself depending on the i mean nature i mean uh, time of uh, what you call on the the method of filing the returns method of filing the returns there are two types so composition scheme is one that is up to 1.5 crore if you want you can take it otherwise no and the other one is regular one regular scheme Regular scheme, the dealers are called regular dealers or regular taxpayers. In this regular taxpayers, there are two types depending on the method of, depending on the periodicity, period of filing the returns, filing the returns. That is, here, the regular scheme, first one is monthly filers, that is filing every month. They have to file the returns. Filing the returns every month, they are called as monthly filers or they are called again regular dealers. In the regular scheme, again, regular dealers, that is, regular dealers are month means filing the returns every month. So, monthly filers, they are called or regular dealers. And the other one is, if they want, they can file the returns every quarterly also, every quarter. So, if you are taking up this one, this quarterly you are filing, called as quarterly filers or the scheme is called QRMP, means quarterly return. The returns will be filed quarterly, but the government will not wait for the money, for the payment of money for one quarter. That is why payment must be made every month. So you can file the returns every quarter, but every month you have to file, pay the money. So we have to check up how much we sold, what are the sales of sale of goods, how much you sell goods or services, how much is the sales and what is the purchases we got and then the purchases you get the ITC that will come later, ITC. ITC and what is the difference? What is the amount to pay? We have to pay the money. So I have to calculate that and you have to pay the money every month. But returns, you can file quarterly, but monthly, you have to make the payment. Quarterly return, monthly payment. So this is the one scheme and this is one one. So they're called as regular dealers, regular or composition. I mean, sorry, regular or QRMP. So for that purpose, there is one limit. Everyone cannot go take up quarterly. If the turnover is not more than 5 crores, if the turnover is 
not more than 5 crores, that is less than 5 crores, you can go for quarterly scheme. Voluntary, if you want, you can take up quarterly, you can file. You have to take that, you have to take the undertaking. So you have to take QRMP scheme if your turnover is less than 5 crores only. So if your turnover is more than 5 crores, you cannot file quarterly. You have to fight every month. If your month, I mean, if your turnover is more than 5 crores, definitely you have to file the returns every month. If your turnover is not more than 5 crores, that is up to 5 crores or less than 5 crores, you can take up monthly, you can file, but if you want, you can take up quarterly scheme also. That is QRMP scheme also you can take. Understand now? So QRMP scheme is up to 5 crores. Voluntary, if you want, you can take. Otherwise, no. Otherwise, other, all others have to file every month. So there are mainly broadly two schemes, regular scheme and composition scheme. Composition scheme is only up to 1.5 crore turnover and it is meant for small business people. And all others are called as regular scheme. That is the regular dealers. In the regular dealers, depending on the method of filing the returns, they are called as monthly filers or regular, quarterly filers or QRMP scheme. Okay. So this is, so for, a, for the composition scheme also, there is limit of 1.5 crore. For regular scheme, in the regular also, for quarterly or QRMP, there is a limit 5 crores. Up to, below, up to that, everyone will be regular only. Above 5 crores, everyone will be definitely, they will take up only monthly file returns only. They have to file. Understand that. The difference you find out. Up to 5 crores, if you want, you can take up QRMP scheme. If you don't want, you can file monthly also. If it is above 5 crores, definitely must file every month. Okay. And now we will know what are the different, I mean, what you call, what you call different returns to be filed by different dealers or different taxpayers. Actually, in that act, nothing, never it is provided as, it is given as dealer. It is called as taxpayer. Taxpayer. We call it as, we call them as dealers, regular dealer, regular taxpayer like that. So we will take up this. All these returns are not applicable to everyone. Some returns are applicable to only some particular type of people only. Okay, right. Now we will take up, first of all, first and foremost, one is, I'm taking up first, I'll take up regular dealers. And then after that, we will take up the uh, composition dealers. Regular dealers, both regular dealers means monthly filers or quarterly filers. And we'll take up, for, later we'll take up the composition scheme. So first one, if both these things I will tell you. Okay. First one is GSTR1. That's called GSTR means Goods and Services Tax Return. Simply it is called as R1 also. Simply. So GSTR1 or IFF, that will I'll tell you. So GSTR1 means it is meant to disclose only the sales during the month. That is the return relating to the sales of the, the giving the details of sales, it is called GSTR1. That means sales means we sell the goods and collect the tax, we have to pay to the government. That's why the GSTR1 GSTR1, which deals with sales, means it is a liability return. That is, it discloses the liability, but you are not going to make any payment. Not going to make any payment. Just we are disclosing to the government that these are the sales. That is the total sales. How much is the sale? And that is the liability. How much liability means? How much you collected the tax? Okay. So that is the liability. In this GSTR1, we have to give, it, give the details of all the sales. All the people to whom we sold, that is the GST number, name, then what is the invoice number? All the people who give different invoices. Invoice numbers, invoice date, what is the rate of uh, tax? There is many rates, 0%, 5%, 12%, 18%, 28%. So what is the rate of tax? And what is the total tax bill value? Sorry, total invoice value. That is called total value, it is called. Total value means total invoice value with tax. And then what is the under different tax rates under different slabs, what is the taxable value? If we give automatically it, will, automatically, it will calculate the, automatically it will calculate the tax also. So the taxable value, this tax will be equal to the taxable total invoice value you have given. If there is error, it will show error. Okay. Like this, 
we have to disclose all the details and this GSTR 1 is to be filed by 11th of next month for every month, 1st to 31st. For this month, total sales, we have to file the GSTR 1 return in the next month by 11th. So 11th is the last date for filing the GSTR 1 that is also called as return of liability, disclosing our liability. And then in this case, there is one more thing to be filed every month called as IFF means, see the other one is, this is the regular dealer, regular or monthly filers, they file the GSTR 1 every month. Another one more also, but the QRMP, under the QRMP scheme, these taxpayers, they file the returns only once in a quarter. They file the returns quarterly. So when they are filing the monthly returns quarterly, the other one said so there is one thing called as ITC. So if I file my GSTR 1, I give the details of the sales to whom I sold. All the persons to whom I sold, I give the details and the tax collected from them. And the tax collected from them will be given back to them as input to tax credit. So they will get the ITC if you file, if you show. So I sold so much amount to so and so person, so and so taxpayer with the number. And this is the tax collected. So the tax collected is shown in the GSTR 1 filed by us. That will go to the other person as input tax credit. So you will get input tax credit if you file only. So if any seller, the dealer files GSTR 1, that is the details of sales. So all the sales details will go to the buyers as input tax credit. They will get input tax credit only if you file. That is why if you don't file, if you file every quarter, up to the quarter, they will not get any ITC. That is why there may be a problem for us because they may stop purchasing from us because we are not getting that ITC every month like that. To avoid that, there is one facility given as you will file the returns only quarterly only. But every month, there is one facility called an invoice furnishing facility. IFF means invoice furnishing facility. So that is a statement. It is not a return actually. It is a statement to be filed only the details of the registered persons. But in this case of GSTR1, to whom you sold in the state, other, the other state, within the state or outside the state, registered person, unregistered person, taxable, not taxable, every details we will give all the details of the, all the sales will give GSTR1. But in the IFF, we give only because if you file, the other person will get ITC. If he is only registered person only, he will get ITC. That is why only the details of the registered persons to whom we sold, that is called as business to business. We are registered, that's why we are filing return. Registered person to registered person. Another person is also registered means with the GST number. Registered person to registered persons, that is registered business to registered business, called as B2B. Business to business means registered means. Business means registered. Business to business means registered person to registered person. So only the sales to registered persons, the invoices given to the registered persons will be, will be filed, will be disclosed in this IFF. If you can, if you file that, definitely this is less like GSTR, GSTR 1, we give all the details. But in IFF, we give the details of only B2B invoices. So the invoices given to only registered persons, that will be, that is why, that will be disclosed. That is why IFF is also called as a mini GSTR 1. In GSTR 1, all the details. In IFF, only B2B. And this IFF is to be filed by 13th. So GSTR 1 is to be filed by 11th and IFF is to be filed by 13th of the next month. Okay. So this is the regarding the key GSTR 1. So IFF also like GSTR 1. Then what about the quarterly people? So per monthly people, we are filing GSTR 1. QRM people, they are filing IFF every month, but it is optional. So it is not, there's not one, everyone has to file definitely. But IFF, it is only optional. If you want, you can file. If you don't want, you need not file. So if you don't file, did not file this month, next month you can file total. Okay, like that. So the IFF will be filed by 13th of the month, giving details of only the B2B invoices. Invoices given to registered people only. And in this case, so what about the 
GSTR one by QRMP people. They are every month they are filing IFF only IFF. With all the details, how they will file GSTR one is they have to file GSTR one that is QRMP scheme after the quarter after completing the quarter and the next month is April to March, April May June for example. So the next month is after the end of the quarter after June July thirteenth. So IFF is also thirteen and quarterly GSTR one also. 13. So IFF will be filed for first two months only because third month GSTR 1 is filed. So in that other details will be given. That is why IFF 13th, GSTR 1 also 13th for the QRMP people. IFF will be filed for the first two months. Third month, for the third month, QR, GSTR 1 will be filed by the QRMP people. Okay. After the quarter, 13th of the next month is the, after the quarter, 13th of the next month, and the IFF and GSTR 1, every month we have to file the, for every month, we have to file in the next month, GSTR 1 11th and GSTR IFF for 13th of the next month we have to file. So this is about the GSTR 1, both for regular I mean, monthly filers as well as QRMP also. Okay, next. Next one is GSTR 2. It is not, it is not a return. It is not to be filed. Nowhere it is found. Okay, so it's not a return. It is introduced in when the GST is introduced in 2009, 2017. 2017, it is introduced. And at that time, this is introduced two and two, two introduced, but the two is not operative. It is not operative from then itself. It is not implemented. It is only a statement of purchases. So we are showing the sales in GSTR1. In GSTR 2, you have to show the purchases, but it is not implemented. So it is not to be filed. It is not to be filed that this, this return is not available at all. Okay. In our tally prime, in our tally, this GSTR will be shown just to check up the purchases from our side. Purchases. Because in the purchases, we may maintain only one account. Common ledger purchases. For all the purchases, we maintain one account. So if you see the purchases, you can understand. But suppose if you maintain different purchase accounts, local purchase, interested purchase, purchase is taxable, purchase exempted. Similarly, purchase 12%, 0% or purchase 12%, purchase 18%, purchase 28%. Like that, in different names, we can maintain different purchase accounts. In such a case, so instead of we have to go and search in every account, we may miss also. That is why at one place, in GSTR 2, GSTR 2, that is GSTR 2 will be available in our tally. So in there, you can see the total purchases. So taxable, exempted, all differently, all uh, in different columns, we will file. We can see the purchases. So this is useful only to find out when you are purchasing, our sellers, they will file GSTR 1. So just to check up whether all of them are Correctly, they are filing our, that means in the GSTR one, they are uploading. Uploading means not uploading invoice. Uploading means giving the details of the invoice is called uploading. So whether they are giving or uploading our details, our invoice details to check up that this is useful, that will be available only in the, see here, for example, if you take up, so display, G, o, o means GST reports. So GSTR one, this is the statement of supplies, that is GSTR one. So GSTR 2, this is the statement of the purchases. Only just to check up whether if you see all the details will be available here. All the details will be available. So here all the details all from all the whether to check up whether all these persons with all these numbers and the amounts they filed or not. Just to check up this, we will use this. Okay. This is not operative at all. Okay. There is no filing at all. Okay. Then, and after that, there are two G GSTR 2A and 2B. Actually, they are not returns also. They are also not returns. Just they introduce their returns. Names are given. They are just called as GSTR return. That is GST return 2A, return 2B. But actually, they are not returns. They are not filed by anyone. By us or by others. Nobody will file. See, when our sellers, that is the suppliers, when we purchase, our suppliers, when they file, the GSTR one, their GSTR one. So all the de our details, that is the purchases from all the other people. When we purchase, all the details will be from their GSTR one. Automatically, this two A and two B 
will be generated in the portal. It is not a return. We cannot enter anything. Just to, to check up whether who, who, are, who are all the suppliers who supplied goods to us filed the GSTR1. When they filed the GSTR1, so our details from whom we purchased, those details will automatically generate, they will come into, they will be updated in 2A and 2B. They are automatically, automatically generated. So what is the difference between these two? One is statement of the purchases. Another one is statement of ITC. So purchase means when you are purchasing goods, we will get the ITC. But here, all the purchases, we cannot claim the ITC. So there is a difference. That is why all the purchases, they will be shown in the GSTR 2A report that is automatically generated. Only the ITC which we can claim, that will be generated, updated in GSTR 2B. So the difference between 2A and 2B, we will find out later. We will discuss in the next video. Okay. So like this, these two are only automatically generated, auto-generated from, <coughs> sorry, from the GSTR 1 filed by the suppliers. Anyone, if we are supply, filing the GSTR 1, so these details will go to the respective buyers into their 2A and 2B. So our suppliers, when they file the GSTR 1, so we will get 2A and 2B auto-generated in our portal, in our account. Portal is our account. In our portal, in our account, these two will be generated. And the difference between these two, what, what, how you have to see these two, that we will come to this later. Okay, now. And then, so every month we are giving the statement of sales that is the liability of our liability what is the liability to pay that is the sales and then every month after that on 20th of every that is next month that is 20th 11th of next month for one month 11th of next month we are filing gstr1 and after nine days 20th of next month that is after 11th it is 20th 20th of next month 20th of next month we have to file another one called as gstr 3B. Actually, it is called as we have to file TSR 3B, but we have to submit that art that will be automatically generated. Automatically generated. That year 3B will be generated automatically, but we have to check up that if there is any error, we can correct that and just file. We have to file that. It will be automatically there. It will be there. So it will be there. But we have to check up and any errors to be rectified and then it is to be filed. That is by 20th of next month. How it is automatically generated? Automatically generated means, see here, in this 3B actually, total summary will be there. As we say, the, in this GSTR 1, only sales. GSTR 3B, total, see, sales plus purchases, summary. All will be in summary only. Purchase summary. And then ITC we claim and ITC set off. That is ITC adjusted against the liability. That is, we get the ITC. We have to pay to the government. So that amount which we are eligible for ITC, that will be adjusted against the liability. And the balance only, if payable, it will be paid. If it is not payable, we will not pay anything. Our ITC still balance carry forward to the next month. They will not refund. It will be carried forward to the next month. This is called as GSTR 3B. And also... We have to calculate all this and it will show the net amount we have to pay to them. Payable or not. If it is payable, how much you have to pay? That is why this is called as payment payment return. That is through this return only, the government will get revenue. In this only statement, disclosing the liability. Here, liability and ITC, ITC, the difference payable or not payable. So if it is payable, we have to make the payment plus in the Previous month, if there is any, I mean, uh, late in filing the return. So late filing, we have to pay the late fees. And amount paid late, it, we have to pay interest. Interest, late fees, all these we have to show in this return 3B. And we have to file that. How it is generated automatically? That is our sales for which we have to pay to the government. And our ITC for which we purchase goods and from the sellers, we got the ITC. So that ITC, how the this will be generated automatically? Means, see here, 3B, in the 3B. So from GSTR 1, the liability will be automatically populated. That is called auto-population. Automatically, here, whatever we 
filed in GSTR 1, those summary will go. And that is what is the total sales, what is the tax payable, IGST, CGST, HGST. All the details will go to the GSTR 3B. So it will go to the GSTR 3B. See here, here, see if you go outward supplies, that is supplies we made, that is from GSTR 1, outward supplies we sales. So it's from GSTR 1, see here, yes, we will take up. See here, all the details. So what are the outward supplies and the, what is the tax we collected? And then from the purchases, what is the ITC which we get? So here, eligible ITC. This is for sales, liability. This is for only the details, only sales will not give, purchase they will not give. Only the tax which we get back, that is called as eligible ITC. The details also will be given. How you got the amount? So how you got all this ITC? So the ITC and liability, the net difference you have to pay to the government. Like this, it will show. So, okay, that is why this is called as payment return. So, on the basis of this return only, we will make the payment to the government. And what about the quarterly people? That is called the 3B by 20th of next month. This is for regular means monthly filers. What about the QRMP? So, here, GSTR1 is 11, paid by, is, uh, I mean, filed by the monthly filers. QRMP they can file only on 30th, 13th. Similarly, here, the regular filers, the monthly filers, they will file just a 3B on 20th of next month. But what about the quarterly people? Quarterly means QRMP scheme, just a 3B will be filed in some states 22nd, in some states 24th. All South India, the date is 22nd only. So North India and some Northeastern North states, they will file on 24th. 22nd or 24th, it is to be paid by the quarterly QRMP people, QRMP scheme. Under regular scheme, we, every month, that is for the next month, to 20th of the next month for every month. For April, May 20. For May, June 20. Like that, we will pay. And here, for GSTR 1, for April, May 11. For May, June 11. Now, running month is July. So, for this July month, after completing 31st, from 1st afterwards, up to 11th, we have to file GSTR 1 in the next month, August 11th is the last date for GSTR 1. And for GSTR 3B, August 20th is the last date for the month of July. Like this we'll find. So this is 3B. So main, I mean not to call, main returns for a regular scheme, not composition, regular scheme, GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B. 1 and 3B. So these are only reports generated. 1 and 3B both for regular monthly filers are QRMP also. Dates will be different, that's all. And then, so this is for the regular people. And what about the composition scheme? Then we will come to the composition scheme. So this composition scheme, people, they have to file two returns. See here, I told you already, composition dealers, they cannot supply to interstates in the other states. So no interstate supplies, only within the state they have to sell. And that also, they cannot collect any tax on the sales. They have to pay a little percentage from their own pocket. Isn't it? That is, but, but purchases, they can make anywhere. But when you make the purchases, you, that we pay the tax on the purchases in the invoices. But the tax, we cannot get back. We will not get ITC because we are not collecting. So that cannot be adjusted. That is why we are not collecting. So this cannot be claimed. That ITC cannot be claimed. For that purpose, what they have to do is they have to, as I told you now, to mitigate the hardship to the dealer, small business people, this scheme is introduced. That is why these people, they will pay only some little percentage from their pocket. Still, they have to file the return only once a quarter. Quarterly return only. Actually, it is called as not actual return. It is called as CMP 08. CMP 08. CMP means composition. Composition 08. That will be filed by 18th of next month, it is only the sales summary. Not, not, not giving the details they'll give. And the sales summary, what is the total sales? What is the to taxable sales? Only on taxable sales they have to pay. Not taxable sales, and, and, I mean, exempted, will rated, they need not pay. Only on taxable sales they have to pay. So they have to disclose the sales summary and it is all, it is, and they have to make the tax payment. So the CMP rate itself is the Chalan also. So, uh, sales summary plus tax payment Chalan is GMP 08. It is to be filed by 
18th of the next month. That is also quarterly only. After completing the quarter, so in the next month, 18th, first quarter, April, May, June, July 18th, July, August, September, October 18th, like that. After completing the quarter, next month, 18th is the date, last date for filing the CMP 08. It is only a statement actually, CMP 08, sales summary, they have to disclose and they have to make the payment. For these people, regular people, in GSTR 3B only, GSTR, regular TV people only, not quarterly, regular people, monthly filers, in the GSTR 3B itself, there is one option, generate Shalan. If you click that, Shalan will be generated automatically with the amount and that is to be paid then itself. After making the payment only, that 3B will make the payment and then file the return. Okay, right. These people will file separately. They will pay separately. Okay. So, this is called as CMP, CMP, Computation Dealers 08, pay, this, I mean, filed in the next month after completing the quarter. It is contains only the sales summary. And on that 1%, I told you already, manufacturers and dealers, 1%, restaurant, 5%, service day providers, 6%. So, as per their percentage, they have to make the tax payment on this chalan. This is also called statement come chalan, CMP 08. And then these people, this um, composition taxpayers, they have to file another return. It is, these people will pay, will file CMP rate only once a quarter. That is, every year they will file only four times. These cases, QRMP, they will file four, four uh, returns. But uh, regular people, they will file 12 plus 12. 12 plus 12, 424. These people, four plus four. That is quarterly, four quarters, one, three B, four plus four, eight, they will pay, they will file, and these people will file 24 plus annual return also they will file, that will come later. And these composition dealers, four times every year, every quarter, totally four times, plus every year after completing the financial year, that is after completing 31st March in the next month, that is April, by April 30, they have to file on one return called as GSTR 4. This GSTR 4 is called as annual return. So yearly once only it is paid. It is quarterly, GMP 08, but GSTR 4 is filed only every year, year. Yearly once only on April 30th of the next financial year. After completing March 31st, from April 1st is next financial year. In the next financial year, that is April 30 is the last date for filing the GSTR 4. That is giving the details of the only sales, see here, GST, G, C, CMP rate is filing. So from this GST, CMP 08, the details of sales and the tax paid, that will be automatically come, come into the GSTR 4. This is auto-populated. It is auto-populated into GSTR 4. We cannot change it at all. Okay. And then in this, sales are, are automatically populated. And all other details, purchases from registered dealers, unregistered dealers, Composition dealers, all these purchases, we have to we have to make the entry manually. They are not auto-populated. Okay, and then so this is about the composition dealers. CMP08, quarterly ones. I mean quarterly ones, that is 18th of next month after completing the quarter. CMP04, after completing the year, that is the annual return, April 30th of the next month. That is after completing the year. Next month, April 30th is the last date for the yearly. Okay. Next, next now, CMP zero I means GS, GSTR five. What is the GSTR five? So from here, some returns they are not applicable to everyone. Only particular people. Okay, this one is this CM GSTR five is applicable is to be filed by NRTP means non-resident taxable person. Then resident taxable person means they are not residents in India. They are from foreign countries. If they come to India, they will do business for some time without any business, fixed place of business. They will do the business in India for some time and they will go back. Such people are called as non-resident taxable persons. If the non-resident taxables are doing business in India, they have to file GHR file 5 by 13th of the next month. For every month they have to file. So 13th of next month, they have to for every month, the details they have to file by 13th of next month in GSTR 5, they are called as non-resident taxable persons. So that will is not actually not applicable to everyone. 
we won't discuss about it at all. Next. Next one is GS-6. After so there are totally 1 to 11. Okay. Uh, GS-6. GS-6 is applicable. It is to be filed by ISD means Input Service Distributors. What is Input Service Distributor? It is a just like quarterly, I mean, QRMP, just like composition regular. It is also a separate registration is to be made called as Input Service Distribution. Registered as Input Service Distribution means a company will be there, an office will be there. It will not do any business. No purchases, no sales. It will not do any business. But it will have different branches in different states. So in different state means they must have a separate registration in that state. So different branches in different states with different registration numbers, but all the registrations will have one common thing. That is PAN card. PAN card will be common to all the registration. In India, you have in any state, any registration, it will have the PAN card. Same PAN card will be there. So this is GSTL is, registration is called PAN based. That is why with the same PAN number, you have in different states, different branches with different registration numbers. So this person, the main office, they will not do any business. Just they will make the purchases. Purchases and the purchases, purchased goods will be distributed to the branches. So the purchases will be sent directly to the branches are getting that and they will send the goods to the business, branches and they will also only do the business. We will not do any business. But since we are purchasing all the goods on behalf of all the branches, we will get the invoice and we will get the input tax credit. That is tax paid by us will be returned to us. That is the ITC we will get, but that is not applicable to us because not we are doing business. All the branches, they are dealing with the goods, they are purchasing the goods from us. That is, we are supplying to them means they are purchasing goods and they will sell the goods. That is why this input we received, we received, it will be distributed to all the branches depending on their quantity of the goods. So that will be distributed. That's why they are called as input service distributor. They will take the input and it will be distributed to the branches. They are called as input service distributors. So they will, when they are registering, they have to, they have to separately register as ISD registration. That is input service distributors. That is not doing any business. Only they will separate the branches and uh, which the, the ITC which they get, they will sub, they will distribute to the branches only. They are called as ISD. So these people every month they have to file the return GSTR 6 by 13th of next month. By 13th of next month, they have to file the GSTR 6 by input service distributors. Next. Next number seven. Number seven, GSTR 7. It is applicable only to the government. Government means central government, state government, government departments, as well as uh, government corporations like corporations, municipalities, corporations, local bodies. All these come under government sector only. So uh, by the government, they have, this is to be filed. Why the government will file? They will not do any business. The government will, what it do is, the government or government organizations or government uh, local bodies, all these, they will give contracts, some work they will give to others. They are called as contractors. They will give the supplying some material that is like uh, stationary or any other material required by them. They will give contract by tenders. They will give contract to others. They are called as contractors. And also contracts will render some services, some construction or some other service. They will render services. They will supply some material to the government. So they are called as contractors to the government. If the contract value of any contractor is in excess of exceeds 2.5 lakhs, if the contract value is more than 2.5 lakhs, the government has to deduct 2% TDS, not TDS under income tax, we learned. These under GST, they have to deduct the GST, I mean TDS, 2% when making the payment to the contractors if the value of the contract is more than 2 and a half lakhs. That's all, only thing, that's all. Only they will deduct the tax and pay to the GST department. That's all. They will not do any business now. So this government has to, government departments, they have to, they will register as tax deductor. They will register as, just like ISD, Government departments, they will register under GST as tax deductor and collector. Tax deductor and collector. So this actually government will not collect anything. They are called as only tax deductor. Tax deductor registration they will take up. They will deduct the tax and pay to the GST. And every month they have to file 
GS class 7, regarding the details, what are the amounts paid, what are the TDS deducted, all these details, they have to file GSTR 7 by 10th of next month. By 10th of next month, every government department, if they have registration and if they get uh, payment to any, make payment in it to contractors, they have to file GSTR 7 every month by 10th. Okay, next. Next, GSTR number 8. GSTR number is also not applicable to everyone. It is applicable to ECO only. ECO means e-commerce operator. E-commerce operator means just like Chuggy, uh, Swiggy, Jomato, I mean, then uh, Uber, uh, Amazon, Flipkart, all these are called as e-commerce operators. Means the persons or the businesses who provide some electronic platform on the basis of, on, for which the traders will supply goods or services to the customers through the e-commerce operators. They will provide the platform for the buyers as well as the suppliers. They are called as e-commerce operators. These e-commerce operators have to pay GST from their pocket. They have to pay GST themselves in some cases. In some cases, they will deduct some money from the suppliers. That is when they collect the money, collect the money from the customers directly and they have to pay to make the payment to the, they have to make the payment to the customer, the suppliers, that is the dealers. So while making the payment, they will withhold some money, they will pay to the government and they will collect some service charges also. On the service charges also, they will charge some GST. All this will be paid to the government. That's why these details, they have to file in GSTR 8, by 10th of next month. That is also easy. Easy also, they have to file by 10th of next month only. By 10th of next month, they have to file this return. So they have to file the return by 10th of next month. So who is the people? ECO. So this is ISD. This is GA government. This is ECO. These are not applicable to other people. Okay. And so up to this completed all the types. And then see here. The composition dealers, after the end of the year, April 30, they are filing one return called as, for the total year, it is called as annual return. Similarly, these regular dealers, that is regular means monthly filers or quarterly filers, key RMP, whatever it may be. They are also called as regular scheme only. In the regular scheme, method of filing is different, monthly or quarterly. But they are all, they are all regular people only. Okay. So, in the case of these regular people, regular scheme, that is regular filers, monthly filers or QRMP, they have to file, they also have to file a return at the end of every year. That is the annual return. See, actually, there are two types. One is GSTR 9. That's called annual return. GSTR 9 means the total, the everything regarding the all the transactions for the whole year, they have to mention in that. If there are any errors, in the previous, in any GSTR, I mean, in, in the returns, if there is error, we can just change that, modify that. That's all. We cannot revise completely. So if there are any errors, these are all to be, can be rectified before March. So every, if there is any error, it is to be rectified, can be rectified in the next month like that. After March completed, so we cannot do anything. For last year, if there is any error or any rectification, that is to be made in this GSTR 9 only. So the transaction for the whole year will be mentioned in this as a summary. So this is called as annual return GSTR 9. It is, there is a lot of time for it. It is to be filed by 31st month after completing the financial year. 31st December of next financial year is the last date. That is for the month of last 20 to 23, already completed. March 23 completed for that. 20 to 23 financial year, the annual return is to be filed by 31st December of 23 this year. That, that means after completing the financial year, next financial year, December 31st is the last date for filing the GSTR 9. But some generally, the government will be extending the time for a lot, extending the time because every year they will provide a new form, format for the GSTR 9. So making the format ready and releasing that, uh, releasing that, it will take some time, sometimes, sometimes they will be changing the dates. And all these dates also are fixed. But sometimes the government, in the case of any problems, they will be postponing the dates also. Okay. Summary, GSTR 3B, 
Sometimes there will be mistakes. So then the four or five days they will post for like that. And another one is 9C. This is also be filed by everyone along with 9. 9C is to be filed. 9C is only a reconciliation statement. What is the total sales? What is the total sales? What is the total ITC? What is ITC claimed? ITC utilized and balance ITC. Like this, we have to make all the reconciliation. So it is only a statement. It is only called as ESDR 9C, but it is only a reconciliation statement. It is to be filed and it should be actually in previously. This reconciliation statement is to be checked up by the auditor, chartered accountant, and he has to certify that. Previously, it was like that. Now it is deleted now, but only the dealer, that is the trader or the taxpayer himself, he can give only a self-declaration enough. So by self-declaration, he can file this. And in both these cases, if the turnover is less than 2 crores, the turnover is less than 3 crores, we need not file these two. We need not file. We need not file these two if the turnover is less than 2 crores. If it is more than 2 crores means we have to file this. But even though it, the turnover is less than 2 crores, it is better to file this because, because if there are any errors, all these are rectified. These the details will go to the income tax also. That is why if you file, if there are any errors, all this will be rectified and all this will be reconciliation is done. That is why it is better to everyone to file these two returns. Okay, so it is less than two crores, not required to file, but better to file. But in this case, so this is okay. In the case of 9C, only up to five crores, simply just we can file that without any declaration. If it is more than five crores, they are declaring. That now is more than five crore. We have to file this with self declaration. With the self declaration, it is to be filed below five crores. We need not have any. We, we can file it without any declaration. And this is to be filed if about two crores. We have to file even less than also. We can file this one about two crores. We have to file. But less than 5 crores, just without declaration, we can file. Above 5 crores, definitely self-declaration is required along with the reconciliation. Okay. So, this is the 9 and 9C applicable to regular dealers, whether QRMP or monthly. Okay. And next, number 10. This is called as final return, GSTR 10. GSTR 10 means final return. That name itself indicates it is final. After that, you need not file anything. That is, here, all these have to be filed 1, 2B, I'm sorry, 3B, GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, and in the case of uh, composition, GSTR 8, I mean, sorry, CMP 08 and 4, GST 4, all these are to be filed even though there is no business at all. There is no sales, no purchases, nothing. No business is there. Still, once you registered under the GST Act, from the first month itself, we have to file GSTR1 and GSTR3B. Every month we have to file. If you don't have any business, we can file it as no business. It's called as nil return. So business is nil. We have to, but we have to file. But in this case, he, see, after some time, suppose if the business is closed, if the business is closed and we will surrender the, surrender the registration or we will cancel the registration, that means there's no business. Or sometimes, even though there is business, if the business goes down, the turnover is less than 40 crores. That 40 lakhs or 20 lakhs as per the mandatory that uh, threshold limit. If the business is less than the threshold limit, we need not have registration. In such case, we will surrender, the surrender or cancel the registration, but business will be there. Or if the business is closed, we will surrender or uh, cancel the registration. In that case, we have to file GSTR 10. That is to be filed within three months, three months of closing down business or three months of cancellation or surrender of registration. Within three months, we have to file this GSTR 10. That is why this is final. And after that, business is closed or even the business is running with less turnover. So it cancelled, I mean, the GST number is cancelled or surrendered. So after that, we need not file any return. We need not file any return, not like others. If you file the final return, that means it is the end of the business. It, it means it is end of the registration. That is why we need not file any return after this. 
So it is to be filed within three months. So within three months, what we have to do is, see, we have to check up. Is there anything till, still we have to pay or anything ITC we have to get back? All this will be done and then the return will be filed. In the return itself, we have to disclose everything. So what is the, any, uh, I mean, dues are there. We have to pay the dues or anything to get back, the ITC get back. All this will be done and we will file this GSTR 10. That is within three months. So this is and then last one, there is one more here. Here, GSTR 11. What is the GSTR 11? GSTR 11 is not applicable to any Indians. That is, GSTR 11 is applicable to UIN holders. UIN holder means all foreign embassies, any foreign organizations. So they will get registration and they will be allotted, not GST number, they will be allotted in a separate number called Unique number, UIN means unique identification number. GSTIN means GST identification number. Goods and services tax identification number. Here, there is no goods and services tax. Here, UIN, unique identification number given to foreign embassies, that is foreign organizations, all this. UNO, US, UNESCO, etc. So, these holders will get this, they will get the unique number. So, they have to file. There is no date for them. Just they have to file GST 11 every month. Or whenever they have transactions. So that is, a, there are no restrictions because there are, are foreign organizations. That is why there will be no Indian restrictions. So GST 11, they have to file. The UN holders have to file GST 11. Generally, they will file every month also. Every month. Suppose, even though they are UN holders, there will be some income, some expenses. So they will get some, they will purchase, make some purchases for the, for carrying their office and they will collect fees from, from the citizens. They will, foreign embassies, they will collect visa fees and all these things, fees. So with that, they will collect the service tax. That means the GST also they will collect because for every service, GST will be collected. All this will be collected that will be paid to the government. So all these details, they have to file in GST 11. Mostly they will file monthly also, monthly. Monthly in GST 11, Regarding their transactions, they will file GST 11 by only the UIN holders. It is not applicable to any Indian. It is applicable to only foreign organizations only. Okay. So this is about the returns. And in this case, when you are making the payment, regular dealer, they will make the payment every month in GST 3B. There will be a chalan in that itself, generate chalan. If you click that, chalan will be generated with all the amounts already built in that and then we have to make the payment and after making payment you have to file that. That way regular dealers, monthly dealers, monthly filers, they will pay the, make, make the payment in the GST 3B itself with the chalan. But what about the quarterly people? They will, they have to make the payment with QRMP, PMT, PMT means payment, payment 606, PMT 06, they will pay the, the QRMP people will make the payment, will make the payment with PMT 06. Okay, that is the. So this is the QR, QRM people will make the payment through PMT 06 because why they make the payment is that is not like, uh, they will not make the payment in GST 3B, they cannot generate chalan. The method of payment, everything is different for the QRMP people. That is why they will you make use of this PMT 06 that people will pay by 25th. By 25th or 23rd, they will file the QRMP. They will file on 22nd or 24th, but they have to make the payment maximum by 25th of every month. That is the PMT 06. Okay, next. Next one other is another one is this is not a pay, by paid by everyone. PMT 08, there is one. Payment chalan. This is called chalan. PMT means payment chalan. This is also payment chalan. Payment chalan 9 means actually it is not paid by anyone. It is simply used for transferring. See here, we are making the payment. We are making the payment. Where whether we pay cash or through the returns ITC. So we will have IGST, CGST, HGST. So in the returns, that is the, what you call uh, collecting and making the payment. And uh, we are getting the ITC also, it will be called as credit. Credit, through the credit, we can not do anything. 
we have to apply. CGST is to be applied to, to CGST, SGST and SGST. But sometimes if you are, when you are making the payment of cash, if there is cash liability, the liability is more than the ITC, the X amount you have to make the payment. When you make the payment, directly it will go into a particular ledger in the portal called as credit label, sorry, uh, electronic cash ledger. Electronic cash ledger it will go. So in the cash ledger, it will be entered immediately, updated in the cash ledger. And then when you make the payment, we will adjust the payment. So from that, the payment will be adjusted for the liability. And suppose if you make the pay more payment, so the balance will be there. In the cash ledger, there will be balance. If there is some balance, there is some balance. Means the balance may be in IGST, CGST, HGST. But since it is paid by us, so we can utilize to others also. But if this ITC cannot be utilized like that. CGST, HGST like that. This cash can be transferred from one head to another head. From IGST, we can transfer to CGST or HGST. From HGST, we can transfer to IG. Like that, inter-head transfers. Transfer from one head to another head if necessary. Suppose we have to pay 100 rupees balance. We have to pay 100 rupees as CGST. So we need not pay cash because in the cash ledger, in IG, IGST, there is 500 rupees already there. So that the 500, 100 rupees you can transfer to CGST and you can make the payment through the cash ledger. That is why it is called as transfer of cash from one head to another head, PMT09. Through this, in this is available in the data itself. If you click that, it will ask you from where you want to transfer to where you want to transfer. What is the amount you want to transfer? Like that, it will ask you. So like that, we can transfer from one head to another head in the cash ledger through PMT09. Okay, so, so this is all called as I, I mean GST returns. Okay, and this is the uh, end of this one. So these are all the things. So one by one later, why how we will learn for about the returns, each one separately. Okay, we will discuss about each return separately, how to file that, how to do that, and only, only the important things, all others we are not required. The government, ISD, all this we will not do. We will discuss to mainly 1, 3B, GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, 8, that is CMP 08, and uh, GSTR 4. This only, and uh, in the case of uh, QRMP also, we will know, regular QRMP, 1 and IFF, 1, 3B, and we will learn about 2A, 2B also, that is input task credit. And how we will use of, make use of that. And what about that? What are the difference between that we will learn? All others we are not bothered. Okay, right. So with this, I stop this topic today. And I believe you learn well. If you have doubts, see one again and again. Okay. And you learn well, practice well, and become good accountants. All the best to everyone. Thank you. Bye.